Now then guys, how are we doing? Thank you for joining me again. I hope I find you well today as we go through the awards and transfers from what has been a pretty successful season. Yet, yeah, you know, we bottled it towards the end of the season at the league. You know, the last three games really let us down. We had that victory over Celtic in the last game, which meant absolutely nothing. And we finished six points behind them. However, you know, cup double. We could have had a treble. The treble was on. The treble was on to our three games in. But a cup double nonetheless isn't a bad way to end the season. And I'm feeling massively optimistic about this transfer window and what we can do. We've got Champions League football again. We didn't have the best Champions League campaign this time round. But when you've got Man United, Inter and Valencia in your group, you're not going to really, are you? So we're going to push on this transfer window. We're going to do the awards first. Have a quick chat about the transfers. Hopefully get some good business done. And then we'll, we'll wrap it up, obviously, at the end of today's episode. Getting ready to start the next season. So let's get into the awards and transfers first. So we've got some players inducted into Hearts' overall best 11 squad then. So we've got Gorey and Goal, Clark, Finley, Soutar and Logan with Rinna Motter in that holding role. Divine, Irving and Byrne with Hernandez and Brown up front. Now Hernandez, he's going to be leaving us, does not want to be there. Do you reckon I could offer him a new contract? No. Juan Mar Hernandez will be doing one regardless, but Rinna Motter has made it into the overall best 11. Lauren Shankrand and Mitrovic have also made it into the substitutes. Craig Gordon there as well. Craig Gordon, currently under-18s coach for us as well. We've got a lot of my ex-players now in the coaching staff as well. Naismith is also there. And then let's have a look at the overall season review then. So there you go then. We've got the Scottish Cup and the Betfred Cup. So my number one sign and then obviously is going to be Mitrovic. 44 games, 34 goals, 6 assists. Very good season. 30 year old. Still got two, three seasons left in, in him as well. Especially at the level that we're playing at at the minute. You know, when we push on to Champions League and we get bigger and bigger, Mitrovic will be looking at retiring then. Or we'll be looking at getting some kind of money out of him anyway. But Mitrovic at the minute, absolutely tearing it up. But when we look at the transfer deals there, Nicolas Del Vigo, apparently the deal was terrible. The board are very disappointed with the deal to sign Nicolas Del Vigo. This is mainly due to the club paying over the odds. We only paid 805k. That is a lot of money, but Del Vigo, I think, has got a lot about him. He's not a first-team regular, obviously, Martirana is the man out there. But Del Vigo is a, a decent fringe player. It was a season to remember then as the Jambos were one of the competition's feel-good stories, defined expectations and thanks to an impressive spell of form in September that saw them move into second place, they were able to celebrate a job well done. Now we look through this all together, we got a C plus for our performance in the league. I don't understand how we were like banging form throughout. We just fell apart right towards the end, that's all it is, nothing more, nothing less. A bad four games towards the end of the season and that has cost us. But, you know, we still get that Champions League place, and that's all that matters. Celtic will be in the Champions League with us as well. How did they think we performed in the Champions League? So we got a C for that. We won one game, a 3-1 win off of Valencia. A decent draw against Manchester United as well, but we got battered on that final game against Valencia to try when we were trying to really sneak into the Europa League. Because, obviously, we've got a better chance at the Europa League. Now, I'd love to be in the Europa Conference if it paid, because we'd definitely have a shot of winning that. But, yeah, Champions League this season again. Hopefully, we have a better show in. So the moments to remember then, our biggest win was a 6-0 victory over Hamilton. Massive, that. Huh? And a match to remember was a 3-1 victory over Valencia. Now, that match was actually played off screen. And that was the one that we won, the only game that we won in the Champions League. And the goal of the season was Shalabar, 1-0 against Hamilton. I showed that in one of the previous episodes. It was an absolute screamer. Finances-wise, then, when we look at the club reputation, nothing's changed. We're still a national-level club. As far as the sponsorships go, we've lost quite a bit of money, but competition prize money, obviously up. Up by £8 million, but it will be when you're playing in a Champions League. Top selling shirts then with Divine, Mitrovic, Shankland, Brown and Rinna Motta Divine in there. And my overall best 11 by average rate in this season. And so we had Gory in goal, Clark, Lombardo, Suta and Logan. Diallo in the hold, no, with Martirana, Rinna Motta and Byrne. And then Brown and Mitrovic up front. We absolutely bossed it this season. I made it sound really bad by bottling it, but you know, on reflection, it was a decent season for us. So when we look at the accolades, then there you go, right at the bottom. So the 24-25 season, we got Manager of the Year, and we also got Football Writers Manager of the Year. So two more awards to go into my personal accolades. As far as the club awards go, then the fans player of the season was Mitrovic, that's to be expected. And young player of the season was Reese Devine. Sign of the season was Mitrovic again, obviously, and goal of the season was Shalabar, which we've just spoken about. Top goal scorer, Mitrovic with 27 goals, and Mitch Clark had the most assists with 10. Player of the match performance, Mitrovic again. He's sweeping the awards here. And the highest average rating was Divine with a 7.4 rating. We were record breakers for the highest transfer fee paid. That was 7.5 million for Shalabar. We did break the bank going out for him. 
And ultimately, it was a successful season for Hearts, who started superbly and set them up perfectly for what was to follow, 100%. And Hearts started better than anyone would have expected and rarely slipped up thereafter until the final games of the season. Shocking. And that is the season review wrapped up then. So when we have a look at the, the analyst, we're aggressive and clinical up front, and we're quite impenetrable at the back, which is good. So club vision expectations, we know the rest of it, but what about the end of this season? And we've just got to qualify for the Europa League again. But there we go. We've got to work towards qualifying for the Champions League season after season. Still nothing said about winning the league. And I've got a couple of seasons before my contract expires. But yeah, Champions League is the aim now. Squad dynamics then. I've got one player that's unhappy. That's John Sutar who feels there's a lack of depth in the attack and midfield. Which is funny because I don't actually play an attack and midfielder. So I don't really understand what his problem is if I'm honest. Team cohesion's good. Club atmosphere is good. And managerial support is also good. Top influencers then. I've got 13 players that support us, but I've still got 8 players that have no real opinion of us. We haven't got a very big squad though, have you, when you look at it like that. Uh, Suta and Gori, both supporters and they're both my team leaders. I'm a vice captain. Arina Motta is no real opinion of us. He's got no real opinion still. End the season team meet and then what we're telling the lads. So the season is over and it's time for you all to go out there and have a well-deserved break. I want every single one of you to be fully rested with a positive frame of mind when you get back because we're going to challenge for the title next year. Yes. I'll also be aiming to reach the knockout stage of the Champions League next season. Let's go for that. And I'm satisfied with that. That's exactly the sort of reaction I was after. And once you turn, return from your holidays, we'll make some more daft promises. So as far as injuries go, then Martorano with five injuries this season. He missed 44% of the season. Wow, with five months out with a broken lower leg. Divine was out five times as well. St. Amar out four times. Clark out four times. And Rina Motta. So there's quite a few injuries there. Maybe that's the training. Maybe that's the, the training facilities. Who knows? Squad end of season break then. So they've all buggered off. They're off to Cancun. And then Bates snubs Hamilton. So Bates, there have been an offer gone in for him, which I've accepted. And the contract obviously wasn't good enough. Lombardo potentially on the move. Where's he going? To Aberdeen. He's not going to Aberdeen. No way. He's got some value now though. 2.3 million. We bought him for 5 million now. So it's going to take some money for him to go. And there we go then, Bocelli claims Scottish Football Writers Manager of the Year. We've done it again. Manager points, 458. Mickey Mellon though, you know, what a finish of the season they've had. And Jeffries is pleased that I've won the award. So we've been hit with a 1.4 million tax bill. It's not bad really. And we've brought in 1.5 million from membership fees. So we've balanced ourselves out there. Commercial summary we know about. Divine was a top selling shirt. And scouting budget then. So we're going for the world, aren't we? We go for the world every single time. Let's get the best players into the club. And board announced new stadium plans will go ahead. So here we go. It's going to cost us £53 million. Wow. And we got £5.25 million for selling Tyne Castle. Jeez, the board have secured a loan of £47.5 million. Deary me. And we're getting additional funding through stadium sponsorships worth £12 million. Very handy. So we're going to get a new stadium with a capacity of 27000 what is our current stadium capacity facilities? So it's just over 20,000. So, you know, it's not a massive expansion. Mitrovic scoops Scottish top goal scorer award. Let's give him some praise. Congratulations. He scored 27 goals. The closest player was scored 16 goals. And Samuel, a player that's torn us apart a couple of times on there as well. Lombardo named as PFA Young Player of the Year. Well done to you. Congratulations. Lombardo has just made his way into the team this season. And he also gets the right as young player of the year. Goal of the season then, Shalabar, he doesn't quite get there. Hearts players named in the team of the year. So Gori, Suta, Logan and Mitrovic in there. And six players have been called up to the UEFA for under-21 championships. So Jungdal, St. Amar for France, Lombardo for France as well. Martirana and Ferendi for Italy. And then Cami Logan for Scotland. So let's have a look at obviously the squad depth then and where we improve. Up front, we've obviously got Mitrovic, Brown, Shankland. They are me free. St. Amar can play up there as well if he wants, but they are me free if I'm completely honest. Out on that left-hand side, we've got Martirana, Divine and Del Vigo. In the middle, we're only playing one midfielder anyway, so we've got Rina Motta, Diallo, Shalabar, and they can all rotate, if I'm honest, within those two positions. I probably will look at strengthening there, bringing somebody else in, but yeah, that is where we're at with that. On that right-hand side, we've got St. Amar and Sugawara. Sugawara has been decent since coming in, but I'm probably going to need a stronger right midfielder. 
At the back, we've got Mitch Clark and Divine, who can play on that left-hand side. Finley can play there as well, but I reckon Finley will be going in this transfer window. In the middle then, we've got Sutar, Lombardo, Pinto and Ancora, who can play there. And on that right-hand side, we've got Logan and Fanadi. Realistically, Sutar can play there and Mitch Clark. There's plenty of options on that right-hand side. And in goal, we've got Gory and Youngdahl. I say it every single season. Will this be the transfer window that we get a... A replacement for Gory, but every season he stays with us. In Youngdahl, you know, when he plays, he plays all right. So we might just keep him as well and keep him sat there. Still playing a 23-year-old, playing for the under-21s. But, yeah, we'll take care. So that is it then. So we know the drill. We're going to break off now. I'm going to go through all the way until the first game of the season. And then we'll rejoin there and we'll talk through the transfer business. Guys, we're back and we have got some breaking news. You can see on the screen there, Hearts takeover completed. Anne Budge is gone. She's retired. So we're seeing this together. I've just been scrolling along and this has just popped up. So personal message following the takeover activity. Andrew Grant is the new chairman. Is he going to change anything? Club vision. Now, they still just want us to qualify for the Champions League. And they still want us to qualify for the Europa League. So nothing has changed there. So we'll just confirm that and finish. It's done. Uh, has it changed anything to the finances? No, we've still got 8.3 million to spend as well. My world has been turned upside down as Ambudge now leaves us and we've got a brand new chairman that we've got to impress all over again. Right, so if you're only just getting over the absolute heartache of Ambudge leaving us, we've had a, another shock and transfer window. Cannot believe it. So a first in any of my FM serves is I haven't actually sold anybody. Nobody has left the club. We've got the exact same team. We have brought in some additions. I have potentially got Stevie Centamar leaving. A £20 million bid has been put in from Stoke. He's currently discussing contract terms, but he could be leaving. But at this moment in time, nobody has gone. So coming in then, in the centre of midfield is Matty Longstaff and he has come in and he's got injured straight away and he's out for five to seven months. Now, 25 year old, two and a half star current ability, three and a half star potential ability. He's a decent addition to the middle of the field and that is basically all the areas that have strengthened. We paid 1.2 million for him, exactly what Brentford paid the season before in the championship and he'd only played five games. Now Matty's only there to add a bit of depth as we've all got Rinomoto, we've got Diallo there anyway and other players that can fit in that position. But, you know, I've still got Irving as well that can fit there. But Matty Longstaff comes in, cost us 1.2 million. We look at him again, you know, decent position and decent work rate, but we're not going to see him now till after Christmas. And we've brought in another midfielder, Alexander Milosavljevic. That's a pronunciation, that one. He's already got one cap with Serbia, 19-year-old. He's got all the potential in the world, this kid as well. You've got to get a Serbian wonder kid in there. He's not necessarily a wonder kid, but you know what I mean. Got to have that kind of player in there. He's cost us £3 million from Partizan. Now, he can play in that defensive midfield role or in the central midfield. Obviously, going to play in the centre midfield. That's what I've brought him for. But, you know, we've got Diallo, Shalabar, now Milosevic, Rina Mota, Bates going out on loan. We've got Lombardo who could potentially play there as well. There's so many players who can play in that position. Longstaff when he comes back from injury. But Alexander Milosevic, bossed it, bang on that pronunciation. And don't you forget it, has joined us on a five-year contract. We then brought in Jack Clark on a free transfer from Tottenham. Now he's currently three-star potential. English player, 24-year-old, valued at £8 million. And we bought him in for free. This is the guy that was at Leeds. Next big thing. Went to Tottenham for 9.5 million. And he's basically just floated about ever since. We've brought him in. Can play out on that right hand side. Can potentially play on the left as well. Crossing and dribbling are decent. He's got decent pace as well. He's not going to set the world alight obviously. But he adds more depth. And that's what we're about. We're playing in Europe. We had a fairly thin squad anyway. So Jack Clark comes in. Can play out on that right hand side. Predominantly where he's going to be. Can also feature on the left. And then lastly, we've brought in Vlada Krigulj. Now, he's another player that can play on that right-hand side. We've got plenty of options there now. But I'm looking at probably dropping Sugawara back to that defensive right position. Another Serbian, 18-year-old, 1.3 million. Potential ability 4.5 star, current ability 3 star. Decent dribbling, first touch. He's got the physicals and he's only going to get better. When you look there, technically he's decent as well. We spent 2.6 million in and we also brought him in from Partizan. So I had a bit of a scout of Partizan, obviously. And we've brought those players in. So we haven't done a lot as far as the finances go. We've still got £5.7 million in the bank. Wages-wise, we've got loads of wages to spend. But we're not going to, obviously. I've got the best part 
and 30 grand to play with. We don't have anyone who gets paid anywhere near that, so we'll be all right in that respect. But team-wise, I'm happy with it. When we look at the dynamics, Team Cohesion's still good. Club atmosphere is very good. Managerial support's very good. Suter still thinks we need to strengthen in midfield. I don't think so. Irving, he wants to go. He doesn't feel that he's good enough for the team. He's still a quality player. He'd probably leave us before the end of this transfer window. And Shanklin wants a better contract. Again, a player that I'm probably going to let go. As far as the hierarchy goes, it looks a bit fuller now. It looks a bit better than it did before the transfer window started. Have I got any player that opposes us? Actually, I have. Lauren Shankland wants to go, so we're probably going to let him go, if I'm completely honest. And I've got 15 players that support us. Sutart, Logan and Gorey now all supporting us. Rinna Motta dropping down into the highly influential player bracket. And squad depth, you know, we're still quality up top. Stevie Centamar up there, Mitrovic, Brown, Shankland. Hey, Centamar could be going. I don't know what to do there. £20 million, though, is a hell of an offer. Out on that left-hand side, we've got Divine and Martirana. We've got Clark and Del Vigo who can play there as well. In the middle of the park, we are absolutely stacked now. Adrina Motta, Diallo, Shalabar, Milosevic as well in there. And then out on that right-hand side, we've got Centamar, Jack Clark, Sugavara and Krajul. Sugawara will probably drop a bit deeper. In that defensive role, again, it's just those two positions combined. Diallo, Shalabar, Adrina Motta, Milosevic and Lombardo can play there. Out on the left-hand side, Mitch Clark and Divine are probably me too. With Finley staying with us... Defensive centre, we've got Suta, Lombardo, Pinto and Cora for me. In an defensive right position, we've got Logan and Fanadi. And then in goal, we've still got Gori and Youngdal, so I haven't even strengthened there. So that is how we are set up. I am happy with how things are. Tactically, you know, we're still going to play the same setup. Mitrovic has got seasons left in him. Milosevic will drop into the middle. We've got Martirana and Clark out wide. You know, still that position is an area that we probably need strengthening. But I'm really happy with how we're set up. Shalabar definitely wouldn't be playing as a centre-back. Let's put it that way. Have we got enough to compete in the Champions League? Because I still think we've got enough to win the league. But have we got enough to compete in the Champions League? That's the big thing. And I'm not quite sure we have got enough. We're definitely better than we were, obviously, last season. But I'm not quite sure we're going to have enough to get out the groups. Hopefully a third-place finish, though. That'll be enough because we want to get into the Europa League. We just want the funds from the Champions League. And we'll just take it from there. So yes, a very quiet transfer window, but when you've got quality players in the majority of positions anyway, you don't really need to have a complete overhaul. So to start the season then, we've got Motherwell and AZ Alkamar in there. We'll obviously recap on this later on, but we're going to start with St. Johnson and AZ there. We'll get those first two games out of the way, and then we'll do St. Johnson and AZ Alkamar to start with. And then we can see that Champions League third qualifying round playoff. There's some good teams in there as well. We'll see what happens. So as far as the league itself goes then, what is the expectation from the season preview? So we expected to finish third place, 13-2 to for a top place finish. Celtic and Rangers are going to be the top two. And have we got any players in the Media Dream 11? No. It is all Celtic and Rangers, so we still don't even sneak in. Mitrovic still doesn't get in there. Not ideal. You know, Mitch Clark's up there as well, still doesn't make it in. So yeah, we're expected a third place finish. I don't really think that's going to happen. But then Queen's Park are expected 11th. You know, we definitely want to be going for that top spot again. So yes, that's it then. So like I say, we are going to come back for St. Johnson and Azad Alkamar in the next episode. So that's where you'll join me next. So a pretty poor transfer window, but we strengthened in the right areas. Let me know what you think about the team in the comments. Because there may be some players out there that you'd like to see come to Hearts. We haven't really got the funds at the minute. But if Stevie leaves, obviously we'll be in a better financial position. So I appreciate you taking the time to watch me today. Thank you very much. Stay safe. And I'll catch you later. Ta-ra.